All right, thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for being here this evening. We appreciate you coming out. Uh, my name is Peggy Hendon. I am president of the League of Women Voters for Tarrant County, and I will be the moderator this evening for our forum. Uh, just very briefly, I'm going to say the difference between this is not a debate. This is what we call a forum. And in a forum, each one of the candidates is given the same question. Each one is allowed a certain amount of time to answer that question, and then we move on to the next one. So that it, it's a little bit different than what you see on TV with the debates, so be prepared for that. Uh, before we start, we do ask that all cell phones be turned off. Uh, we do not allow recording of forums other than our AV group up here. I would like to begin by saying the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. We work to promote political responsibility through informed and active participation of all citizens in their government. We do not support nor do we oppose any political candidate or any political party. Uh, we, the League of Women Voters puts on forums such as this as a public service. I would like to introduce our candidates that are going to be participating this evening. Uh, I can't read your name tags. First of all, we have Sherry Means Hart. We have Ricky Lawson. I'm sorry, Ricky. I can't read my own handwriting. I apologize. <laughs> and Brad St. Clair. I am also going to introduce at this time uh, Mr. Flippo, who is running unopposed, so he will not be uh, participating in an actual forum. However, as an unopposed candidate, he is allowed five minutes to speak on his own behalf, present his positions to you, the audience. Thank you. That was a big one. Hope you all can hear me. My name is Todd Flippo. I'm the mayor of Saginaw. It's been my privilege to be the mayor for the last uh, three and a half years. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. I really appreciate the League of Women Voters uh, hosting this event. Uh, it's great to have it. We have not had one of these in a long time, so it's, it's well overdue. So that's what, a couple things I wanted to say just about me and about the city and different things. Um, like I said, I've been in office just over three and a half years. Uh, I have been here a long time. I grew up here in Saginaw. I went to Basel uh, many years ago. Moved back in the early 2000s with my wife to raise our family. Uh, built um, our, our house on, on the family farm. Uh, my grandfather was a dairy farmer. So I've been around a long time. Um, I have a, a great understanding of the history of Saginaw, but more importantly, the future. Uh, I have a vision for the future, and that's why I'm running again. Uh, to carry out more of the vision for the future I have for Saginaw. I think Saginaw can be more than what we are today. We've made progress, but we have a long way to go. Uh, I, I really am optimistic about our future. That's why I'm here. That's why I love Saginaw so much, as, as many of us do. Um, Saginaw is more than just a place. Saginaw is a people. It's a community. Uh, it's who we are together. It's you and I. We are Saginaw, not just the, the dirt, the physical place. I dream of a Saginaw where people can live and work play and can be more tired. Uh, so a lot of things uh, that are going on are very exciting in the city. Um, we've got a lot of cool economic development coming, uh, things that we're really working on uh, to make the city even better and stronger than it is. We're currently about almost 25,000 people. So that's a big change from where we used to be. When I grew up, we were about 4,000 people, so and we're still growing. Uh, we anticipate full build out, we might be 36,000 people in the next 15 years. So. Very important decisions we make today will directly impact where we are in 10, 15, 20 years. 
that's why it's, we've got to really be cautious and be careful with the decisions we make to make the right ones for the future and where we're going. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of things. So I'm, uh, it's my privilege to be, to be mayor, and I will look forward to three more years. Um, I really want to encourage y'all to vote. That's why we're here to talk about voting. So the election is May 1st. To give you some understanding, our last contested, contested election was in 2019. Just over 3.5% of the population voted, of the, the voter, registered voters voted. So 3.5%. That's terrible. That's embarrassing. Please vote. People will, will wait in line for 20 minutes and spend $10 for a cup of coffee every day, but won't go for free and spend five minutes to vote. So please vote. Honestly, I tell people, I don't care who you vote for, just vote. Please. If you have a chance tonight to hear from the candidate for place two, these three folks, you can make up your own mind, but please come out to vote. I'm begging you, please vote. Also in the, the election on May 1st uh, is our bond. Uh, we have the first bond in uh, almost 10 years. Uh, a couple things about the bond people have heard about. There's three items in the bond. Item one is streets, specifically Knowles and uh, West McElroy. The uh, reason we're doing those is Knowles uh, it is well overdue, but it also floods. On, also, especially the north end of the park really has some flooding issues. Uh, some of those streets off Knowles flood every time it rains. We've got to increase that. We've got to increase the street to make it a little safer, but also get rid of the flooding. Um, that will help. McElroy as well needs to be redone. It's, it's well overdue. Uh, and that's just over $36 million. Um, I did mention how we got to this bond, and I'll back up a little bit. Uh, in 2018, we had, in this very room, we had a citizen summit. About 60 citizens came together, just from the community, came together, set of tables, and talked about what they like about Saigon, what they don't like, what they want to change, what they want, what they don't want. So we collated all that information, put it together, and then in 2019, we had a citizen bond committee. Uh, I think it was 12 or 13 people, citizens, not, not, the, not the council, but citizens came together, sat down, met for several months, learned about the issues, took that information from the citizen summit, put together a package of 10 items that they thought should be on a bond. Uh, they brought to the council, it was just about $100 million. It's a lot of money. We cut that down to just over $67 million for what we thought was the, the top the top uh, priority. So that's how we got there. So it didn't come from the council, it came from the citizens, it came from y'all. Uh, the great thing about that uh, is we, now we have the opportunity to do that with the bond election. I can't spend any of that money, we can't, until, unless the voters say yes. So as I mentioned, there's three things. First is the streets. Uh, second is the library. We're looking for a new library. Uh, the John Akeer Library is just right at 30 years old. Uh, it's nearing the end of life. It's also um, we're outgrowing. Uh, it was built when we were a much smaller city. Uh, to accommodate 36,000 potential people, we need more. Uh, we need a bigger library. Am I out of, out of time? I'm out of time already. Okay. Item number three is a new senior center at Parks. Uh, the senior center at the log cabin is very, very old. It leaks. It's not ADA compliant. It's not safe. So we want a new standalone senior center. Our seniors deserve a great center for themselves. Uh, and then Parks have some money there for Parks, so $4 million for the Park Board to allocate to a new Parks. So please vote. Please vote. May 1st. Thank you very much. I was I was going to I want to now just talk a little bit about the format that we will have for our forum. Uh, each candidate will be given three minutes to make an opening statement. For the candidates benefit, our timekeeper is one of our members, Kelly Smith. When you have 30 seconds left on your time, she will put up the yellow sign. And when your time is out, you get the red stop sign. And we will move on. Um, after the opening statements, we will proceed with the questions that have been submitted by the public. Each candidate will be given one minute to answer the question. And then at the end, we will, each candidate will be given two minutes uh, for a closing. All right. Uh, and we will go in an alternating order when, when we do our questions. So, if we would like to begin with Ms. Hart for your opening statement. Okay, 
My name is Sherry Baines Hart. I'm running for City Council Place 2 because I love Saginaw. I moved here in the early 60s. I went to Saginaw Elementary, Wayside Middle School, and I graduated from Boswell High School. I want to serve all of Saginaw. I want to ensure a balanced budget. I want to keep our taxes as low as I can. I want to support our senior citizens. I want programs for our youth. I want to ensure that everyone still wants to raise their families here, their children, their grandchildren. I have a very big passion for Saginaw. Like I said, I grew up here, and I want the best for the people that are existing residents here and the ones that want to move here. And it's your city, and it's your choice, and I want to just serve the people and do the best I can, and hopefully I'll be the one that you choose. And I do, like I said, I have a big passion, a big heart for Saginaw because I was raised here. And like I said, your city, your choice. Mr. Lawson. Good afternoon. My name is Nick Lawson. And first, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and participating in this forum. Over the last month and a half, I've visited every neighborhood in Saginaw. I've talked to a lot of different people. We discussed issues and concerns that bothered them, things like speeding through our neighborhoods and the rise in crime rate. These are things that our city council needs to pick up and come up with acceptable solutions. I've been married to my wife, Ann, for over 30 years. We chose to build a house and raise our family in Saginaw. We've lived here for over 20 years. Our four children are now grown and they're off on their own adventures. I'm an engineer, a certified program manager with a degree in statistics. I run multi-million dollar projects for a Fortune 500 company, and I've done that for over 25 years. I'm a physical conservative. That means I feel that the government should account for every penny of your hard-earned money they spend. They should spend it wisely. They should listen to the citizens of Saginaw, and they should mold the city in the direction in which you want your city to go. I, I feel that the government should be open and transparent. When putting bills and things together, they shouldn't make them complex, but they should write them to where the average person can understand them and be able to make an informed decision and decide if your money is being spent in your best interest. These are the things that I fundamentally believe in. If you believe in those things, I'm probably your candidate. I'm very glad you all came out today. I look forward to hearing your questions and providing the best answer I can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. St. Clair. Good afternoon. My name is Brack St. Clair, and I am running for place two on the Saginaw City Council. Uh, my wife and I moved to Saginaw in 2009 and uh, when she was pregnant with our first child. And um, we chose Saginaw because we wanted a place that was um, close in, but not too close. We wanted a, a small town that was close to the big city where we could get to the services that we wanted to go to, but also be able to um, have that that small community feel, and, and Saginaw does that, and I think it continues to do that. Um, in 2012, I uh, volunteered to become a part of the uh, Parks Advisory Board as an alternate, and I sat on the, the Parks Advisory Board, and I, I started to learn uh, kind of how the city worked and, and the things that were uh, important to the citizens uh, when it came to the parks. Um, and how they utilize uh, city services. Um, in 2019, uh, I was also a part of the, the Citizen Bond Committee, and uh, we were able to tour the different uh, city services and, and buildings and see the needs that, that the city had. Um, the city has done a, a really good job with managing the resources that it has, and I want to see that continue and, and 
prepare us for the future as well. Um, I decided to run for, the, uh, for city council uh, simply because I want to make sure that uh, everybody is having the same opportunity that I had when I first came here and that is to make sure that um, we're able to raise our children, that we're able to retire, that we're able to uh, live our lives and improve that quality of life uh, as, as we move forward. So, thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our questions. And as I told you all earlier, we'll be alternating down. Uh, we're going to start with Ms. Hart. And the first question is really kind of interesting. Um, can you explain the current form of government that the city of Saginaw possesses? And how do you feel you would fit into that form of government? Can you, I'm sorry, can you be more specific? Um, no, that, 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 that's the way the question was worded. I want to serve Saginaw the best I can. I'm not a politician. I have a lot to learn and I'm willing to learn that to do the best for Saginaw. And I just I said I was raised here. I want to keep Saginaw a hometown where everyone wants to live. And I just want to do my best at whatever I can and hear what people have to say, what changes they want to make, go in their direction, and just keep spending low where we continue to live here comfortably. the current form of government that the city of Saginaw possesses and how would you fit into that? Yeah, the current form of government uh, that Saginaw has, we often refer to it as a, as a, a weak mayor or weak governorship and the way it's divided is the council and the mayor elect a uh, manager, a city manager, and the city manager runs the day-to-day -day business and then the council and the mayor they're the ones who sets the policies and the long long-term vision of the um, of the city and that's pretty much it's the same way as ran like a business thank you all right mr st Clair, can you explain the current form of government that the city of saginaw possesses and how would you fit into it all right, so um, it, as, as Mr. Lawson stated, uh, the city manager is the one uh, who's uh, kind of acting at the, at the behest of the board of directors, which would be the council and the mayor. And uh, so uh, anything that's coming before the council requires uh, at least four of the council and mayor to agree to it. Otherwise, it doesn't pass. So, um, my goal and how I would fit into that is that I would desire to work with the existing members of, of the council and the mayor and uh, make sure that we're putting together policies and ordinances that benefit the quality of life that everyone has here. Thank you. I, we're going to start with Mr. Lawson on this next question. Actually, this submission has several questions, so we'll work our way through. First question is, growth is inevitable. What ideas do you have to help Saginaw embrace the growth in the best way possible? I'm sorry. I'm can, can I do it louder for you? What? Did you say grows? No. It says growth. 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 Oh, growth. Got it? Okay, it's inevitable. What ideas do you have to help Saginaw embrace growth in the best way possible? Yeah. Saginaw, just like the whole Metroplex, and just like all of Texas, is just exploding in growth. Uh, we have about 
24,000 people right now in Saginaw and is projected to go up to 30 to 35,000. What we need to do is plan. We need to have good ordinances in place to where these new buildings and these new subdivisions get built that the proper drainage and runoff and things like that does not swamp the current citizens and our properties in Texas. So we need to be able to bring in the new, but also pay attention to all of the Saginaw residents that's already here and make sure that we don't destroy their property and their livelihood. I thank you. Mr. Sinclair, growth is inevitable. What ideas do you have to help Saginaw embrace the growth in the best way possible? Okay, so uh, I believe that incentivizing developers uh, with commercial developments is the way to go uh, in concentrating our growth so that um, it is not as many single family homes, it is more commercial enterprises so that we can maximize the sales tax revenue that's coming into the city. That relieves the burden of uh, what is happening uh, with the property taxes. Uh, we, we're able to kind of control the, the acceleration of property taxes through sales tax revenue. And uh, that, that would be my plan to incentivize growth that way. All right, thank you. Uh, we're going to start with you again, Mr. St. Clair, because we're going to start working our way back down. Next question is, if you were describing Saginaw to someone looking to move here... Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss you, Sherry? My apologies, please go. Okay. Well, growth is inevitable everywhere, and I think that way we need to promote new and existing businesses, be fiscally responsible with our funding, and like I said, keep people coming to Saginaw and taking care of our existing residents so we continue to grow responsibly and just make sure our taxes are low and, and just take care of all of our citizens and listen to their ideas of what we need to do that people still want to move here and stay here and keep our taxes low. I thank you, and I do apologize for that. <laughs> All right, for our next question, Mr. Sinclair, if you were describing Saginaw to someone looking to move here, what would you say, and what are the strengths and weaknesses? I would say that the that Saginaw is still that small town with a uh, community feel. Uh, that is one of its strengths. Our parks are a, a strength. Our uh, sense of coming together in things like uh, the February ice storm. I saw so many neighbors getting out and helping each other and uh, I heard stories of that all over town. Um, that That is probably the greatest strength that Saginaw has is its people. And then um, as far as weaknesses, we, we do need to work on infrastructure. Roads are a, a big concern of mine, and uh, there, there's some problems that need to be investigated and, and solved uh, quickly before we uh, bring in a, a lot of new developments. All right, thank you. Now we're going to get to you again. <laughs> the question is, if you were describing Saginaw to someone looking to move here, what would you say, and what are the strengths and weaknesses? The strengths to me to move into Saginaw is it's still a small town feeling. Our citizens are great, they're resilient, they're close, and like Brock mentioned, Brack, I'm sorry, mentioned in his response, whenever we had the snow and ice, we had a Facebook page, at least in our neighborhood, that people were reaching out, you know, saying, we have water, we have firewood, we have food, come stay with us, I don't have any electricity. Everyone came together and it was nice to see, even if it was in their own individual little neighborhoods, it was very nice. And the weakness is our roads are getting crowded and we want to have better roads and 
better drainage and things like that, but we also need to be responsible with our funding and to, but that it, one is one of the big issues is we have a lot of people moving in and we want them to be happy here and have the same benefits that we've had all through the years. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Larson, same question. If you were describing Saginaw to someone looking to move here, what would you say? What are the strengths and weaknesses? Definitely we have the still the small, small town vibe, but we're very close to Fort Worth, so we get all the benefits of a big city that we can uh, go to and, you know, and participate in. We also, very tight communities, a lot of the communities have uh, things throughout the year. I know we do a pig roast, uh, a bro uh, 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 we're fixing to have a, uh, what do you call it, a crawdad or a boil and uh, things, things like that, and that's really good. Things that we need to work on is as these new subdivisions come in, we need to make sure that all of our infrastructure can handle it and we don't put the stress. Also, being surrounded by Fort Worth puts a lot of strain on us in that they're, they're sucking out a lot of our tax base. And a lot of the major artery roads, we have to deal with them in order to get them fixed. And to me, that's, that's the biggest problems. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hart, we're going to start with you on this next question. It is, Saginaw is a city manager-led municipality. What ways would you support the city manager and staff? Is this better for you? Not really. <laughs> okay. Okay. And staff. Okay. As by supporting the city manager, I would like to um, ask citizens questions. You know what we need to do to make this a great place. What we need to do to, in all situations. When I was out walking my flyers the last week or so, I've got you know a lot of comments from different people, and I would bring those to the city manager and discuss some of those you know problems or issues or complaints or even compliments and try to work with the city manager to do the best we can for all of our citizens so that all issues can be, you know, resolved or taken care of or at least thought of and answered. Thank you. Mr. Lawson, same question. Saginaw is the city manager-led municipality. What ways would you support the city manager and staff? First, the city manager is basically an employee that's hired by the council and he runs the day-to-day -day business and the way that the council should work with the city manager is to ensure that all the residents are getting their needs and things taken care of your garbage picked up your sewers clean your uh, storm drains cleaned out the potholes in your roads fixed that is what the city manager is supposed to do. He's supposed to manage the city and take care of such things. So I would work with the city manager to make sure that those are being done for our citizens. All right, thank you. Mr. St. Clair, same question. Saginaw is the city manager led municipality. What ways would you support the city manager and staff? Well, I think the uh, the initiative that Gabe has rolled out uh, recently with the garage gap has been, uh, puts our city in a unique position where uh, we are able as uh, representatives of the city and, and the city manager and the staff are able to uh, connect with people in a relaxed format, an informal format, and they're able to discuss issues that they're having. Uh, they're able to discuss that with the chief of police. They're able to discuss that with the mayor. They're able to discuss that with the, the city manager, the director of public works. All of these people have been attending these garage gaps, and they're able to um, to communicate on a on a much more personal level, and, and not as a as a frightening level as uh, maybe wandering down to city hall or going down to the police station might might do. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lawson, 
we are going to start with you on this next set of uh, questions. And this next set of questions, we had uh, voters who were asking about the bond issue. And I'm going to split this question into three parts because quite honestly, I went and read your propositions and I think it is not fair to ask a candidate to try to answer all three of those in one minute. So I'm going to split it out into the three different propositions. So Mr. Lawson, if we could start with uh, bond proposition A, which is the 37 million bond uh, for street and road improvements. If you would like to give us your position on that particular proposition. Bond A is, we refer to it as the, I guess the road bond. I have two major issues with this bond. Uh, the first issue I got is what I call these this cityscape or the uh, uh, money that they're spending to decorate and beautify around the city hall. And the second problem I got is the going through the park there, the widening of the road and putting the roundabout in there. They had a proposal to put a pedestrian overpass and they chose not to. And I think that that's going to cause somebody to get run over. I think they should have used the money that they was using to uh, put some shrubs around the uh, courthouse and used it to put the pedestrian crossover. Because in my opinion, it isn't if somebody's going to get run over, it's when, if they expand that road and don't put that across. Thank you. All right, thank you. Right, Mr. St. Clair, same question. If you would like to give us uh, your position on Proposition A. I am 100% for Proposition A. There is not a single item in that proposition that I disagree with. Um, I believe that the widening of the roads and allowing for larger sidewalks around City Hall is a good thing because that's going to allow for single lane, slow, wide sidewalks, it's uh, pedestrian friendly around where the uh, senior center and the library are going to be placed uh, right across the street from City Hall essentially. Um, the roundabouts were designed in a very safe manner. There's uh, many materials online uh, on the city website showing how the uh, roundabouts are the safest solution for that. Knowles is going to expand to having 15,000 cars a day driving through the McElroy and uh, Knowles intersection and uh, the roundabouts the safest way to accomplish that. Right, thank you very much. Right, Ms. Hart, same question. Your position on Proposition A. Can my, on Proposition A, I'm against Proposition A. I believe that we do need roads in a different direction with the, at least the four-way stopway and the Knowles and McElroy but I don't think it's a roundabout. We just put in the new lights a couple of years ago. I believe that turn lanes would be safer. A lot of people use that park. The roundabouts to me and the walkways are just dangerous and people looking at a light to me would be safer than trying to figure out a roundabout, especially when you have crosswalks that are gonna be close to that area. So my, I am not in favor of the roundabout or the roads at this time. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. St. Clair, we're going to start the next set with you, and that is going to be asking you to give us your position on Proposition B, which is the City Parks and Senior Center uh, bond issue for 11 million. Okay, uh, this is an issue very close and dear to my heart. Um, having served on the Parks Advisory Board for nine years, uh, this proposition, I want to see those parks improved. Uh, Four million dollars sounds like a lot of money, it really is not. Uh, the Parks Advisory Board uh, submitted about 35 million dollars worth of improvements that could be made uh, to the parks and uh, we're able to pare it down to 12 million and then down to uh, four million. The new senior center is absolutely necessary. The log cabin, 
uh, sits on prime commercial real estate land that could be used for commercial dine-in restaurant purposes, uh, things of that nature, and uh, it's in terrible shape. It needs to be renovated, and that would be too costly on for that, so the, the new senior center is a, is a necessary improvement. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Hart, same question. Your position on Proposition B. I believe that the city parks are heavily used and they're great. The dog parks are full of animals all the time. The, every, I see a lot of people, I drive by the park a couple of times a day and they're great but I just don't think at this time is the right time to spend that money on the, this proposition either. I'm not against it, I just, it's pushed through too fast in my opinion, and I just think it's something that we need to wait on, look into other options, until with the pandemic, we don't know what our economy is gonna be like within the next year, and I just believe it's something that we need to wait on as well. All right, thank you. Mr. Lawson, same question. Your position on Proposition B. Proposition B, I'm against. Uh, it's two parts. The first part, the parks. While it's $4 million, they don't explain at all what they're going to spend the $4 million on. They do give us a $30 million thing, and there's a lot of things in that $30 million that I'm absolutely against. Uh, you know, if this was my own money, and it is, I would not give nobody $4 million without telling me what they're going to spend it on. Also, the Senior Citizen Center, we do need a Senior Citizen Center, but there was a proposal to put the Senior Citizen Center right here in the rec center and save a ton of money by having open areas that they both could use. It may not be what we want, but to do that would give us what we would need, and sometimes that's what you got to go for. And so therefore, on Proposition B, I go for what we need and we don't need a totally independent thing, and we don't need to spend $4 million without understanding where it's going. Thank you. All right, Ms. Hart, we're going to start this last round with you, and this is your position on Proposition C, which is for the construction and equipment for a new library. I am also against the Proposition C, I believe that our library is used and it's um, I, in my understanding that people are not being charged to use the library and they're coming from other cities to use the library for free and maybe if you know there's some changes that we could make to make a, more income for our libraries and maybe add on or whatever but I just don't I'm not for spending a lot of money with all this being pushed through so fastly because of the economics that we don't know about in a year again I'm I'm just not for these propositions right now, but I'm not against them for the future. It's just not, to me, it's just not right, the right time to spend this money. All right, thank you. Mr. Lawson, again, your position on Proposition C. Proposition C. We currently have over 7,000 registered people that use the library, and we get about 6,000 people come through the door of the library every day. They teach English as a second language and foreign languages. Our children, when they go there for story time, has to step right next to the front door because there's no rooms. The rooms that they have are overbooked every day. For this reason and the high use that it gets, I'm actually for this one. It seems like a very good investment. It, you know, we're getting a lot of visibility and a lot of people are using it. Also, the estimates is over 85% of the people who use our library are Saginaw citizens. All right, thank you. And Mr. St. Clair, same question, your position on Proposition C. Uh, I am for Proposition C. Uh, I agree with Mr. Lawson. Uh, the number of residents that go through that building every day uh, is astounding. The fact that we only have 10,000 square feet for uh, the entire population of Saginaw, which was fine when we had 15,000, 12,000 people here. We now have 26,000, and the library has stayed the same size even though we've doubled our growth. 
we're looking at another ten to fifteen thousand people to move in and uh, when that happens we're going to need a lot more space for the library there's only currently one meeting room uh, and it's not even able to be used right now so there's no place for larger groups to meet uh, in, in the library the study rooms are constantly booked and we need to expand those. We need to provide these opportunities to people who need to use computers, who need to use the library for more than just books. All right, thank you very much. Very quickly, Karen, could you let me know when we start getting close to our ending time for the forum? Just give me a wave. All right, thank you very much. All right, we're going to start our uh, next set of questions. Mr. Lawson, with you. Um, this one is, as a resident of Saginaw, what would you consider the biggest change needed? Biggest change what? That is needed. The biggest change that we need is to understand that Saginaw is growing, but it's moving from a small town to an actual mid-sized city. And we need to understand the infrastructure so when these new buildings and these new neighborhoods come in, it doesn't overdrive the citizens that's already here. We need to pay very close attention to our sewer drains, our power, and all of that. that that's the biggest thing. Thank you. Right, Mr. St. Clair, same question. As a resident of Saginaw, what would you consider the biggest change needed? I believe that the biggest change needed is uh, in the area of infrastructure. Uh, we are a growing city. We don't currently have uh, as many services on the east side of uh, the, the railroad tracks and yet that over the next 10 years is going to become probably the the most populous part of the city um, we need to start looking now into north south corridors so that we're able to uh, make sure that we move traffic efficiently through and that emergency services have opportunity to to be able to respond in a timely fashion we need to make sure that we're not only just planning on roads and, and storm sewers and, and drains and electricity and water. We also need to be looking at uh, city services like uh, possibly annex uh, buildings or uh, furthering the parks, uh, providing, uh, making improvements to Highland Station so that it's able to, uh, to sustain the growth that's, that's coming. Thank you. Ms. Hart, same question. As a resident of Saginaw, what would you consider the biggest change needed? Um, like these two gentlemen, that the infrastructure and that we need businesses on all ends of Saginaw so we can all benefit from it and have transportation to get to and from those businesses and of course our emergency responders to be able to get to all of those with the different areas and we just need to be ready for our growth and make sure that we you know, have access to all of it. All right, thank you very much. All right, our next question, Mr. St. Clair, we're going to be starting with you. And this question is, how do you see Saginaw engaging voters within the 18 to 35 age range to be more active in their communities? a very good question. Um, as the mayor uh, pointed out today, uh, in 2019 we had an abysmal turnout in, as far as voter participation. So that that is something that we, we need to be able to hear from the 18 to 35 year old group. Uh, we need more. Uh, that, that's our average age uh, in the city now. And so we, we need to have them voting. Um, the best way of accomplishing that, I believe, is to uh, continue to push the social media platforms, uh, engaging on Twitter, engaging on Facebook, um, and, and expanding that to, to be uh, even more informational uh, so that uh, 
we're reaching out in ways that they're communicating with on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Ms. Hart, same question. How do you see Saginaw engaging voters within the 18 to 35 age range to be more active in their communities? And like Brack said, voting, attend city council meetings, getting more involved, and just seeing what they, since they're the new people coming to our city, you know, what can we do for you? What, what, how, why we've stayed here? Can we help you raise your families, your grandkids here, and stay in Saginaw like we have? And like I said, social media, I'm not a big social media person, but if that's the age, 18 to 35, if that's what, you know, that's what you wanna do, then maybe we can fix that up, maybe you have signage around, get everybody more involved, so you'll stay here and love it here like I have. Thank you very much. Mr. Lawson, same question. I believe in grassroots. I think that we need to get uh, that generation involved, uh, more involved with the police, with the fire department, have more grassroots things where they set up things to just do with that generation. I think the city needs to reach out to a lot of our uh, uh, working class people in the neighborhood. And, and set up little projects like little welding projects or building projects things like that get them engaged i'm actually an engineer but i don't think sitting in front of a computer of these kids is good for them i think we need to get them out here get their fingernails dirty i think that would be the best way to get them engaged thank you very much all right for our next question Ms. hart we're going to begin with you and this question what are your opinions on the roundabouts, and do you know where they are going to be? That's Ms. Hart. Okay. I'm not one that, is, that likes the roundabouts. I think they're too confusing to me. Anyone that goes up to a light, it's easier to see red, green, yellow, than try to look around to see who's coming next. And the crosswalks, to me, are too, the way that I can see it, in the YouTube video and the images they put out, it's to me, it's too dangerous to have crosswalks right there. But the people going around the roundabout, they're watching where they're trying to go, and then they said there was going to be like two to three car lengths, and then you've got to stop because somebody's walking the crosswalk. And like I said, a lot of people use the park, and I'm just worried about everyone's safety. Thank you very much. Mr. Lawson, same question. Yeah, I've spent a significant amount of time in Europe. I have no problem with roundabouts. I've read all the statistical data, no matter how you measure it, roundabouts are better. But this city is the people of Saginaw, and we need to look at that and weigh that if you're a, you know, representing the city. And there's a majority, a lot of people in Saginaw that absolutely does not like roundabouts. Also, talking about these specific roundabouts, you have to look at the roads coming into them. And like I say, it's going through a park, they're gonna widen the road. So it isn't just a roundabout. It's in a park, they're widening the road, kids are gonna be crossing backwards and forwards across that road. Thank you very much. Mr. St. Clair, same question. Okay, so a couple of things. There are two roundabouts in Proposition A. Uh, one of them is at W.J. Bowes and Knowles. The other one is at McElroy and uh, Knowles. Uh, they're both single lane roundabouts. So the, uh, the dangers of a multiple lane roundabout uh, increases speed, and uh, whereas the single lane roundabouts are going to force it to be a, a much slower speed. Um, the pedestrian crosswalks are raised and illuminated so that there are essentially speed bumps so that when you're coming up to the roundabout, uh, before you get to the roundabout or after you come out of the roundabout, that's where the pedestrians will cross over. They're only having to focus on two directions of traffic rather than eight. Thank you very much. All right, for our next question, we are going to be starting with you, Mr. Lawson. And this question is, 
what is the Beltville Plan Development District? What is the Belt Mill? Am, am I pronouncing yes. that right? The Belt Mill Plan Development District. That is something that I don't know about. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Belt Mill Plan, and uh, that's something that if I got on the council, I guess I'd have to learn about. Thank you very much. Mr. St. Clair, some questions? The uh, Belt Mill Plan development is a uh, master development that is going in uh, essentially on the north of Bailey Boswell on the east side of the railroad tracks. Uh, the city council has worked with the developer to create a public improvement district uh, so that there are public improvements, uh, streets, uh, parks, uh, things of that nature that will be improved by taxes that are only occurring in that district. So um, city funds, existing residents are going to be able to enjoy those roads, enjoy the parks, uh, but the majority of those expenses are not going to be incurred uh, by the existing residents. Is high. I um, don't know anything about the plan development as well. That would be something I would have to learn as a council member. All right, thank you. All right, for our next question, we are going to begin with Mr. St. Clair. All right, this is for all of you. Do you look at city council agendas before any of the council meetings? Uh, yes, I do. In fact, um, ever since I uh, turned in my candidacy packet, I've actually been attending the city council meetings every two weeks um, for several reasons. And uh, the main reason was so that I could get acquainted with uh, who is on council and, and how do they think, uh, what questions are they asking, what, what are the current events that are, that are coming up in these council meetings. I didn't want to run for city council and then uh, just, oh, I'm sorry, I, I was like, man, that was really quick. Um, <laughs> um, I apologize. Uh, I didn't want to run for city council get elected, come in and say, okay, so what do we do? How, do? how does this work? I wanted to get acquainted with the process, much like how I got acquainted with the process, being on the parks board as an alternate, and now I'm chair of that board. So I understand how that, that board works and, and the things that we're trying to accomplish. So I wanted to do city council much the same way. Thank you very much. Ms. Hart, same question. Have you looked at the city council agendas before any of the council meetings? I have in the past before COVID, and I went to a few meetings. I'm not saying I went to all of them. Um, if I had a concern, I would usually just reach out to a staff member and ask them you know, what my concerns were and get that answer from them. Thank you very much, Mr. Larson. Uh, yes, I have. In fact, the city council meeting that we just had, I didn't realize that the Beltway thing was what they were actually uh, talking about. I, I knew about it, I just didn't know it was called the Beltway. It, uh, to give you a little more information on that to show you, I, I have called into them and listened to them. It's actually a big part of it is a multifamily, means basically apartments, and there's like I think 800 and some or something like that that's going in there. And that's going to, of course, increase our people per square mile significantly. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I started with you, right? So we're going to start with Ms. Hart on this next one. Have you been on any city boards or committees in the last two years? Um, have I been on any city boards? 
Have you been on a city board or committee in the last two years? No, I have not. Through my job at a major airline, I've worked in finance, production, HR, and things of that matter, but not an actual city board. Thank you. Mr. Lawson, have, have you been on any city board or committee in the last two years? I have never been on any public city board or public committee, but I have been on a lot of company boards and company committees like the IEEE standard, the engineering standard, things like that, which gives me a very unique uh, viewpoint and uh, looking uh, into, especially as we're growing in things, to be able to reach out to businesses and like I say, the IEEE and look at the IEEE standards, stuff like that, and get a totally different perspective. Thank you. Yes, like I, I've said before, um, I was on the Parks Advisory Board from 2012. I'm still currently um, and currently chair of that. I was on the 2019 uh, Citizens Bond Committee, and I'm currently on the Comprehensive Plan Action Committee uh, that is helping the City Council come up with uh, the 30-year plan and, and projections for the future. Uh, as far as Saginaw goes. Thank you very much. Uh, this next one we will begin with Mr. Lawson. And this is, this question is, if the parks bond passes, how are you going to gather input from the citizens that live close to the proposed parks? Um multiple different ways uh, we would i would send out flyers i would uh, use the uh, facebook uh, the saginaw residency page and ask them uh, i've already like i said i've visited every neighborhood in saginaw i can already tell you one thing i had four different people that talked about frisbee golf never played it before but i'm familiar with it they talked about how we really needed one things like that that's how i would reach out and see and that's why I would prioritize what goes in the parks, is, is that a way. Thank you very much, Mr. Sinclair. Same question. Okay, so um, the Parks Board is currently revising its master plan for the next uh, 25 years, and the 25-year plan really can be boiled down into what happens over the next five or so years. So before any of the money got spent on the $4 million from the, the bond proposition, uh, we would need to have that master plan completed. That master plan is gonna involve a lot of input uh, from the citizens. Um, they're gonna be able to have quite an effect on things that they want included in that master plan. That's gonna give enough direction to the Parks Advisory Board to know which projects are highly anticipated, which ones are, are, are needed. Uh, Kimley Horn is going to be the one that, uh, that's the design firm, and they're going to uh, engage community involvement, have uh, places at the, at, at the Saginaw, uh, oh, okay. Uh, they're going to get it through a, a very various avenues, uh, both through the website and through personal contact. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Hart, same question. If the parks bond passes, how are you going to gather input from the citizens that live close to the parks? Well, I would um, like maybe walk the neighborhoods, reach out, I guess, on social media ask people to attend meetings, meeting groups like the Garage Gap in different neighborhoods and see what people are wanting to do, whether there's trails, basketball courts, play areas, get with the citizens that want to be involved in it and ask them personally what they want and, and go to, like I said, go to different neighborhoods and get in with the citizens and get their opinions and ideas. Thank you very much. For the next question, we are going to uh, begin with Mr. St. Clair. This question is, 
What do you believe the roles and responsibilities of a city council member are? So the, the role of city council is to uh, basically build the dream. Uh, they're the ones looking into the future. They're determining what, it, what is best for the city, uh, what, what is uh, the, uh, the direction of the city, and then it's the city staff and, and manager, city manager and staff that execute that vision. Um, I'm sorry, that, that was the first part of it. What was the second part of that question? There was, what do you believe the roles and responsibilities of a city council member are? So the responsibilities part of that is uh, city council has to set the budget and they have to make sure that, uh, that the, what the city staff is doing is uh, that it gets paid for. And so that, that's the, their primary responsibility is to make sure that they're spending the money that they get in, in a wise manner. Thank you very much. Ms. Hart, same question. What do you believe the roles and responsibilities of a city council member are? One of the roles I believe is to listen to the citizens, see what they want, move it forward to the council, the city manager, and implement plans and ideas and make things happen if, if that's what we want to move forward with. And just listen to our citizens and and make good decisions and make people want to, like I said, live here, stay here, and just make sure that we're, we're there for the city. We'll work for you. We want to make things happen that you want and just implement our plans as needed. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. The city council are elected by the people to represent the people. And that's exactly what the number one job of a city council member is, is to do the people of Saginaw's will. We should listen to the people, and then we should put together a plan that they want and execute to that. That part of the plan that they give us is to ensure that the health and well-being, to make sure that we have the correct city manager and that he's doing his job and the day-to-day -day business is getting done. That's exactly what a city council person should do. Right, thank you very much. Right, for our next question, we will be uh, beginning with Ms. Hart. And this question is, lost, there it is. Will there be any plans for a Saginaw Botanic Gardens what do you think of having a designated garden space? I don't know of any plans, but that's something that someone could bring up to the council and then to the manager. And I believe on McElroy and Opal, there was a, at least a start of like a, a garden center, if I'm not, I'm not sure, but it seems like I saw that. But it's just something that people would need to come up with, take it to the council and let them vote or decide if that's something that the city could use and afford. Thank you, Mr. Lawson, same, same question. I know that on the long-term plan right now in the council, there's no plans for botanical garden that, that I've read. But this is a, a, a very interesting uh, proposal and, and I guess, what I would look at, thinking of this, is think big, is why can't we take some of the power lines and stuff and maybe not do a botanical garden, but set up community regular gardens where you can grow tomatoes, green beans, things like that, and use it as a grassroots to get more people involved. And plus, we're also, uh, you know, helping out Encore because they're not going to have to mow it. And it's making it nice and having the neighbors and people in the community talk. That, that would kind of be my ideal to more something like that, to actually maybe not something grandiose, but something we need and could use. Thank you, Mr. St. Clair. So uh, I was actually contacted today uh, by one of the city councilmen uh, because a seventh 
it was either a seventh grader or a seven year old, I, I can't remember which, but uh, they're doing a school project and they want to use some of the land in uh, Highland Station Park for a little community garden. And I thought that was such a great idea um, to be able to provide something like that. So I think we should have uh, areas designated um, in the major parks uh, that would be for something like a community garden or, or thing of that nature. As far as I know, there's no, no plans for a botanical garden though. Thank you. And for our next question, we'll begin with you, Mr. Lawson. And excuse me, this question is, do you have any plans on how to help with property taxes? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, this is a problem, you know, pretty much all across Texas, the, the way our property taxes are set. And, you know, uh, most of the property tax actually goes to uh, the school. And, you know, so in order to address that, the uh, program management me would, would have to say, you know, we got to break that down, figure out where our big hitters are and determine that. And the number one thing is, it's coming, you know, the school district is coming out of that. Another thing that's driving property taxes is everybody moving in and just driving up the overall cost of our houses. Our, you know, it's nice when you see your house go up by, mine's went up by 50 some percent since 2016, but my property taxes go up directly proportional to that. Maybe there's something from the city wise we can do that away, but you know, it, it would take some deep thought and some number crunching to figure out exactly how to make it whole. Thank you, Mr. St. Clair. Same question. So we are a exploding city. We're we're growing at a at an insane rate, um, and people are moving in from out of state where they've sold their houses for a lot more than what the going rate is here. So they're able to offer cash for those houses and that's driving the market up. Um, and it, it's pushing out the, the local Texas uh, buyer. And um, the city really doesn't have the lion's share of what happens on city tax, or on, on your property tax bill. Um, it, it, like Mr. Lawson said, it is the school board, and a lot of that is determined by uh, their bond propositions and, and their cost of doing business. Um, so, the, yes, the city can have an effect on property taxes, but it, it's pretty minuscule in, in comparison. Thank you, Ms. Hart, same question. We want to make sure that we can stop extravagant spending. We want to keep a balanced budget, keep everything in control. And it seems like Saginaw is in good shape right now. We want to keep it that way the best that we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, for this next question, we will be beginning with Mr. St. Clair. And this is, this is an interesting question on process. What process will you use to decide how to vote on any particular issue? Uh, so when, when the city council meets, they have an agenda and it gets published online. And if you go online, uh, any, any resident can review that agenda. Uh, at the bottom of that agenda are the supporting documents for that agenda. And so uh, the process that I would use is, first of all, I would read over the agenda. I would look at the detailed documents that are uh, at the bottom of, of each agenda item. And then I would formulate questions uh, for the city staff uh, to make sure that I understood what was happening, um, un understood the, the situation, so that I could make an informed decision about it. Uh, and as time permitted, uh, I would want to make sure that I was contacting 
uh, people about a, a relatively large issue so that I was getting more input from the community rather than just trying to make a decision on my own. I thank you very much. Ms. Hart, same question. What process will you use to decide how to vote on any particular issue? I also would review the issue as what is being proposed and as my understanding we get we would get an email would give you plenty of time to review what is being proposed and if you have questions then you ask the city manager or whatever department that they're proposing and you get that question and if you don't get the answers or it's moving too fast I would ask for it to be moved on to the next council meeting or something in the future if we don't have enough information on that to vote. Thank you. Mr. Lawson, same question. Yeah. The first thing I'd do is I would read the proposal and get an understanding of it. Then if I was unfamiliar with the proposal, I would reach out to experts in that area and get their advice and opinion of what it is. Second, if it was something that was a hot, a hot topic or something that was going to have a major effect, on the city, then I would reach out to my voters and see what they felt. There's also me being an engineer and in the private sector, there's a plethora of different tools that I could use, such as called a Pew Matrix, where you can use that for rating and ranking, and also some statistical analysis called Jump and things like that, that I could bring to bear on just number crunching. All right, thank you. Now, this is going to be our last question before closing statements, and we're going to begin with Ms. Hart. On this question is, what motivated you to run for office? Well, being a resident here since the early 60s, like I said, I love Saginaw, and I want it to continue to be home for many where they can raise their families and just be where we can have a, the cost of living where we can afford to stay here. And I just, I have a passion for Saginaw and I love people. I want to do the right thing. I want to listen. I want to serve with openness, honesty, and integrity. And I, I want to hear what people have to say. I want a voice in, and I want to make my voice heard. And I want to do what's best for Saginaw. And I, I just have a passion for Saginaw. Thank you. Mr. Larson, what motivated you to run for city council? Well, I've lived in Saginaw for over 20 years. Uh, I very much enjoy uh, Saginaw. It's, it's my place. It's my house. Everybody here is kind of my family. Uh, in the 20-some years, I have ran into a few problems uh, with getting help when I needed it from the city. The last one uh, was a drainage problem that not only me, but some of my neighbors had when they built a new subdivision, all of a sudden our backyard started getting flooded. And we had a dickens of a time trying to get that straightened out. And uh, now that my kids are grown and gone, I actually got some time to invest into it. And this position came open. And so, you know, they say either shut up or put up. So I'm here. Thank you very much, Mr. St. Clair. Same question. What motivated you to run for the city council? Um, mostly my family. Um, I have uh, I have a real heart for the the people that I'm around, uh, for the city, for the neighborhood, uh, for my house, my home, um, and I wanted to uh, have an effect on that. I wanted to to see what I could do to make that better for me. And I want to make that better for me, but then I also want to make that better for my neighbor, and I want to make that better for the city. I, I want everybody to improve their quality of life, um, and I want to make sure that I'm involved in that process, and, and because I want to help people uh, accomplish that. Okay, thank you very much. I, we're going to have uh, closing statements from each one of our candidates. Each one has up to two minutes to provide their closing statement. And we're going to go in reverse order from how we started. So we're going to begin with Mr. St. Clair. Two minutes for your closing statement. 
Well, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I'm, I'm very glad that we did this forum. Uh, I don't think it's ever been done before, or at least not in recent memory. And um, I, as a voter, would appreciate the, the time and energy to be able to, to listen to uh, the people that are running for office and make sure that what they're saying and what they're talking about aligns with what I think and believe. So um, I would obviously very much appreciate your vote, um, but uh, any one of the three of us, I feel, is, uh, has the city on, it, on their heart, and um, we all want to do what's best for the city. And uh, while we can have disagreements about what best is, um, it's my hope that we can all come together and make this city the absolute best it can possibly be. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawson. Saginaw is a working class city. My neighbors are welders, builders, truck drivers, they're uh, nurses, and we even have a police officer about four doors down. We're all very busy, and when we run into problems, we don't have time to go figure out all the complexities within the city. We need a representative to come in and cut through the red tape and help us solve our problem. If you're that way, I'm probably the candidate for you. I'm a candidate that believes in physical responsibility. I give my money to the city. I expect the city to be a good steward of it, to not spend it frivolously. I don't make as much money as they do over in South Lake. I can't afford that. I want what I can afford, and I don't want to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars for 20 or 30 years. If you're that away, I'm probably the candidate for you. I believe in a very open and transparent government. I think that when they write a bond or anything, they should write it where the average person can understand it. You don't have to have a law degree to figure out what in the world you're voting on. If you're that away, I'm probably the candidate for you. I really appreciate all y'all coming out and listening to us. And uh, I've enjoyed as much as you can sitting up here and answering your uh, questions. I hope that uh, we answered them well, and uh, you know, and you guys got something out of this. Uh, most importantly, though, please get out and vote on May first. Saginaw is notoriously for having low turnout. We need your all's vote. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Ms. Hart. And I want to thank you also for everybody coming out. And it is important to vote. You have a decision. You have a choice. We're here for you. And I want to be open, honest. You can send me an email, a text, a phone call, any, you know, any questions you have for me. I'm very open, honest, and I would serve you very well. I would listen to you. I would work for you. And we're all here for the same reason because we love our small town that's growing, but we still love our town and we want to do what's best for it. And I want to, like I said, I want to work for you. I want to get to keep our taxes low. I want to keep our growth under control where we can continue to live here for years and years. And again, I appreciate, every, appreciate everyone coming. And we're all here for the same reason. And just remember to go vote. Thank you very much. I think they all deserve a round of applause. This was not. of an audience and taking questions you have no idea what you're going to be asked i think they did a wonderful job thank you all for coming out tonight in saginaw we appreciate seeing you and as everyone has said please please remember to vote encourage your neighbors and friends to get out there and vote also thank you very much and have a lovely evening